on this episode of China Uncensored, part three of China's secret holocaust. Welcome to China Uncensored, I'm Chris Chappell. In the third installment of China's secret holocaust, I'll be taking a look at why adherents of the Falun Gong spiritual practice have been singled out as the main victims of the Chinese regime's forced organ harvesting. In the previous episode, we looked at the phenomenal growth of Falun Gong in China during the 90s and the persecution that followed. The Chinese regime is harvesting the organs from still living Falun Gong practitioners because they provide an abundant source to a massively profitable organ donation system. When former Chinese leader Jiang Zemin began the persecution, he issued orders to ruin their reputation, bankrupt them financially, and destroy them physically. He said his plan was to wipe out the practice in three months. Keep in mind, this was a practice that was estimated to have as many as 100 million practitioners. Every province, every town, every village was given quotas for how many practitioners they needed to turn over. If they failed to meet those quotas or were seen as resisting Jiang's orders, they were met with severe punishment. Of course, over a decade later, it's clear Jiang's three-month plan to wipe out Falun Gong failed. You can see it in just about every city around the world, and the Chinese regime has been continuously called out for persecuting the group. But inside China, the persecution has never stopped, and Falun Gong practitioners never stopped appealing for their rights, and the threats to their family, friends, and co-workers, and the human rights lawyers who would defend them never stopped either. So to protect those close to them, many Falun Gong practitioners refuse to give their identities to authorities when they're arrested. But while that might protect their family and friends, what this means is right at this moment, there is a massive body of prisoners of conscience languishing in Chinese labor camps, and nobody knows who they are or where they are. Under the Chinese regime, people disappear so often they've actually come up with a term for it, renjian zhengfa. It basically means disappearing into thin air. Zhang's orders to Chinese police and prison guards were that, and I quote, if a Falun Gong practitioner is beaten to death, it counts as suicide. Now what happens when you have a massive group of prisoners of conscience that nobody knows exists and no one will be held responsible for if someone dies? Well, according to multiple independent investigations, they become a great source of organs. Tens of thousands of hearts and livers, pairs of kidneys, eyes. A heart can fetch as much as $150,000. And because their lifestyles prohibit drugs, alcohol, and smoking, Falun Gong practitioners tend to have healthy organs, especially compared to the usual population of a labor camp. And it's not like they're killed and then their organs are harvested. The investigations show that the organs are harvested when they're in their best shape, i.e. when the person is still alive. Of course, they don't leave the operating table that way. Once the Chinese regime dehumanized Falun Gong practitioners in the eyes of the general public, they could get away with anything. To give you an idea, this is what one YouTuber posted to me after my last episode about Falun Gong. So why has the Western media been silent on this? It has been over a decade after all. We'll look for the answer on the next episode of China Uncensored. My name is Chris Chavel. Have a good night.